All right, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Redistricting Radar. Um, I'm your host, Eric Cunningham, and joining me shortly will be uh, Armin Thomas and Harrison Lavelle, who are going to be going uh, helping us go over our discussion tonight. Uh, this uh, Tonight, I should say, we're going over three states, uh, Missouri, uh, Montana, and Nebraska. Uh, these are three pretty interesting states to go over because they actually do have impacts on redistricting and on control of the, uh, the Congress and this cycle. Um, with a razor-thin majority in the House, Democrats are going to need all the seats they can to try and defend their majority, and also Republicans are, you know, gunning to um, to to increase their majority, or to increase their chances to the majority, I should say. And all three of these states offer potential uh, Republican holds or pickup opportunities, or Democratic hold, holds or pickup opportunities. Um, so I guess we'll kind of go ahead and get started before I um, join in. As usual, we're going to go over the redistricting law uh, first in Missouri. And Missouri is an interesting state because it, it used to be much more competitive than it is right now. Even as recently as 2016, 2018, it's had competitive statewide races. Uh, it has one Democratic statewide official, uh, Nicole Galloway, although her office is up in uh, in an unusual um, off-year midterm cycle. So she has a little bit of an advantage there compared to, um, you know, compared to other people. But uh, Missouri's law basically is very simple. Um, is the legislature can pass uh, whatever map they wish, and then the governor can veto it. And if they don't agree on a map, it goes into a different um, redistricting project. And that was the old, that was the old format. Now um, there are two. Um, there's a redistricting legislative panel that is assigned to create these maps. Um, in the event of, in the event of a veto, um, I, I'm not sure if it's the if if it's the plan right now. But regardless, Missouri has a Republican trifecta. And Republicans basically have their way in terms of congressional maps. Even the clean Missouri proposal, which was voted for and then recently voted against by the voters of Missouri, wouldn't have impacted the congressional um, lines. And so right now, Missouri is an interesting state because it has uh, – it's a 6-2 to two state right now. Uh, it has six Republicans and two Democrats. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you um, what the state of Missouri looks like at the moment. Um, and so the, the map is kind of unusual in a lot of ways, um, and it, it kind of devolves from politics from the previous cycle, 2010. Um, 2010 was unusual in that uh, Missouri had 10 congressional districts then. Uh, there was a competitive race in the old in an old congressional district, which was now defunct, um, which was stretched from St. Louis City all the way into some of these counties down here. Republicans almost flipped the district despite the fact that they had voted for Obama by 20 points in, uh, in 2018. And so this map was agreed upon. Uh, the fifth is very odd because it stretches into these rural Republican counties. But this is a specific request of the Democrat, Emanuel Cleaver. Um, he had wanted to keep a challenger out of the race. He had run a fairly close contest in, in 2010. And so he chose to have these in here, which basically took out the hometown of his rival back then. Now, it did not stop his rival from running again. But this district is so Democratic at this point that there's really – um. There's really no competition here. The rest of these seats, with the exception of the second, which is a very competitive district in suburban St. Louis County, um, all of those districts except for that are non-competitive. These are all very, very Republican districts because Missouri is a very, very Republican state. So let's kind of go over uh, the representatives here. Uh, the first district is currently represented by Cori Bush. Uh, she defeated Lacey Clay in the primary last cycle in a race that many, including ourselves, had called midway through because it appeared that Clay had indeed pulled out the win in the Democratic primary. However, Bush was able to ultimately win on the support of a big, strong performance in St. Louis City. Uh, her seat has the entirety of the city of St. Louis in it, along with African-American portions of the city of the county of St. Louis, which is the rest of the other major suburban county, uh, with the exception of a few others that are smaller around it. And she's a very, very, very progressive uh, individual. Uh, she's basically – she's a member of the squad uh, in name, if not in, in fact, um, and is a self-identified democratic socialist. I mean there's really not much to say about her. You know who she is, uh, one of the more liberal representatives in the country. Uh, Ann Wagner represents the second district, which she has a distinction of representing a Biden district. Uh, this district narrowly voted for Joe Biden. But it returned her to Congress by a fairly large, by a reasonably large margin. I believe it was on three or four points. Uh, a lot of people, including ourselves, have projected this race to go to the Democrats. But she was able to hold on. 
Uh, this is again based in St. Louis, uh, St. Louis County, as well as in the northern county that's right above it that is also suburban. Uh, Blaine Luttermeyer uh, represents the third, has some exurban, uh, uh, exurban St. Louis portions, as well as portions of the capital area, uh, you know, the, the center part of the state. If you look at a map of, of, uh, of Missouri, you'll notice that it only has three Democratic areas. Kansas City, uh, the center of the state, which is home to the university, and then St. Louis and St. Louis County. That's the Democratic portion of the state. That's really all they have at this point. And so most all these other seats are really uncompetitive. Uh, Vicki Hartzler represents the 4th District. And this is a district she flipped in 2010 from Ike Skelton, who was a Democratic incumbent. Uh, this is a, this seat has some of the, the uh, Kansas City suburbs. It has um, some of the more Democratic areas in the center of the state, but it is not competitive at, at all. Emanuel Cleaver is in the 5th, and he is seen by some as a target to be eliminated in redistricting. Uh, in theory, if Missouri Republicans wanted to, they could get rid of the seat. Um, indications are they will not do that. Uh, there seems to be a consensus that he's fairly well liked among his colleagues. There's just not a whole lot of interest in splitting up the Kansas City area. But it would indeed be possible for them to do that. And so that's why we're really focusing on on the fifth in the future, because it's a seat that could very well be gotten rid of. I'm going to go ahead and welcome Armin, Armin on the stream here. Uh, we're just going over the Missouri congressional districts right now. And Harrison uh, as well. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and he's Harrison. going in right here as well. So uh, just to update Harrison and Armin on what I've been doing, we've been going over the Missouri congressional redistricting law and the congressional districts at the moment. Um, some interesting stuff for sure here, and we can, you can add in, but I'm just going to finish up explaining these representatives. Um, Sam Graves represents the northern portion of the state, very, very Republican. Uh, like most of the Midwest, uh, you're really seeing a divide between rural and urban areas, and and while his seat does have some suburban Kansas City areas, it is a very, very Republican seat. Uh, Billy Long is probably one of the more famous uh, congressmen from <laughs> uh, from uh, from the state. Uh, he is uh, a former auctioneer, and he is able to talk like an auctioneer. It's kind of a gimmick that he's used during some campaign stuff and during um, stuff as a congressman. Uh, he represents Springfield, some areas around. I believe Joplin is in his seat. Um, again, very, very conservative. And then finally, Jason Smith is from the 8th. And this is the boot heel portion of the state, the, the historically quite a conservative area, but also has the lead belt, a more ancestrally democratic region. And so you can kind of see through here the changes in, in years of the congressional map, where it was kind of a consensus map for a while. Very little change. It had nine districts. I misspoke and said it was 10. It actually had nine. Um, then after 2013, or sorry, after 2010, the old third was eliminated entirely. Uh, some progressives uh, will be very, very irritated if you mention this because they'll argue this was a gerrymander to get rid of the third. While you could certainly have drawn a more Democratic second district uh, in the St. Louis area, the third really wasn't a, a very uh, a very compact seat. It had basically the white portions of St. Louis plus some suburban counties. It really wasn't uh, – and there's really no reason to split the city of St. Louis. It's more than small to fit in a single congressional district. So – we got the current map, obviously the unusual fifth, which will probably be cleaned up or eliminated in redistricting, and that's kind of the status here. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead. Make sure you, you point know, out as well in District One the population loss that you've got in the actual St. Louis metro. I mean, they're just going to keep having to grow the size of the district as the population continues to bleed. That's a problem there. Yeah, yeah. St. Louis is really one of America's incredible shrinking cities, as I'll call it. Um, it used to be a, a real metropolis back in the day. Um, one of the most well-known cities in the country, certainly one of the more respected cities. In fact, it was so respected that it decided to expel the rural portions of the county at the time, which is now St. Louis County. It decided to expel them from, from its city because they were, I guess, obscuring the majesty of the city of St. Louis. Uh, in hindsight, they really don't like that decision because the, the county now well outnumbers the city in population and is also far safer. Today, St. Louis is, has one of the higher crime rates in the country. The city is is not incredibly well off and is declining in population. And so it's kind of had to continue to bleed into the second district in order to retain its current shape as a mostly African-American district. Um, so that's going to be one thing to keep an eye on there for sure. St. Louis County, though, is, is an interesting one because it's been trending way to the left. It used to be a competitive county in statewide elections, but it's since become a very, very reliably Democratic county um, in, in most ways. Although there's not really an appetite to unite the city and county like some progressive advocates have wanted to push for. They like being in their own column. 
but it is voting more like the city, um, or at least the white portions of the city, than it did previously. Um, any other comments we have on, on that? I mentioned that Emmanuel Cleaver is actually not likely to lose his seat, that it appears the Missouri delegation seems willing to keep him. Um, and yeah, make this I mean, he's... Uh, and, and keep Missouri he, I feel like someone like a, a Cleaver or a John Yarmuth, you know, those are the people that are less likely to be drawn out. You know, someone, like, someone like Jim Cooper or Lucy McBath, on the other hand, different story. But. Yeah, Jim Cooper... Yeah. It, uh, Jim Cooper is is another good example of this because he is really, really well liked and respected by Tennessee Republicans. He really represents the old soul, the uh, the the moderate Nashville Democrat. The fact that he had such a close shave in a primary, though, uh, really, really likely means that he's going to be eliminated because Repu- I mean, Tennessee Republicans a, do not want a DSA member representing he, that well, seat. He, he faces another progressive primary challenge for this time, but the seat won't exist. I mean, compared to, yeah. again, John Warmuth, Emmanuel Cleaver, Andre Carson, his seat's much more likely to be drawn out. Yeah, yeah. but again, Cleaver is is more of a moderate Democrat. He's certainly not in the progressive wing of the party. Uh, Republicans would certainly get rid of Cory Bush if they could, but that's literally impossible. Illegal, um, too, For multiple yeah. reasons. Yeah, the, yeah illegal. Yeah. Not even, let's not but, even discuss, because it's just pointless. Yeah, but yeah. again, the seat will be cleaned up. Uh, those red rural counties will be removed, and will likely just go a little bit northern into the St. Louis suburbs which are becoming a little bit more democratic as well. But uh, with that out of the way, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and show my, uh, our election daily or elections daily um, redistricting radar map of, of uh, sorry, of, um, of Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Of, of Missouri, uh, which again, uh, it's a little bit outdated data at this point. It's not quite uh, it, where it was, um, but again, it's still fairly, fairly useful in terms of looking at the affiliation of some of these areas but more importantly, it's actually really um, – it's done a pretty good job of keeping um, – keeping uh, of what it could look like. Um, we have a fair map there. We have other maps. It's worth noting that the St. Louis County did see a substantial shift in the 20, uh, 2020 election, which really means that a lot of the uh, maps based on 2016 data are going to be outdated. This is the seat that literally went from, I think, Trump plus 10 to Biden plus half a point, one point. So it's it's a little bit challenging to look at some of these drones. The, didn't Trump still? No, win he the narrowly second? lost it. He I thought it was the other lost one. It. No, Daily Cost confirmed sure. he narrowly lost it. The oh. point is, it's a very marginal district now. Very I, marginal. Yeah, because when so, I had last looked at it, I thought that Trump had won it by 160 votes or something. But no, no, no. Daily Cost said he lost it by about that same margin. Um, but this is our fair math that we drew. Uh, you'll notice here that the fifth remains the same. Um, it, it or doesn't remain the same. It gets rid of those rural portions. This really becomes a true urban, suburban seat. The rest of these seats are all very similar, except for the second, which is now again a – it's very similar to the current one. It's a narrow Biden seat. Uh, the first, although again, is very, very democratic. St. Louis is a very liberal area. Uh, the white voters are liberal, but also has a, a lot of African-American voters who are also very liberal or very democratic, I should say. The rest of these seats are all pretty similar. Nothing really changes. I'll go ahead and show these for posterity, although keep in mind the numbers here are a little bit off. Uh, the Republican gerrymander, it's really pretty basic. Uh, you just split Kansas City, which this one does three times. And then you also split St. Louis. Uh, this, this splits the suburbs off into two different parts of the district here. And then some of the other portions go into the, into the sixth district. Um, not really much to say there. It's just a very basic district. A uh, very basic design, although again we don't know how much of those how much would have shifted going into the cycle. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show my map, my fair map that I created, and then we'll go into Harrison's and then Armin's uh, map. Actually, we'll if, you go don't mind, uh, if you don't mind, can we oh. have Armin go first? I'm still touching up my second Missouri map. Oh, oh yeah, sure, well, I was going to show mine. I was going to show mine first okay. though before um, before you. Okay, perfect. Yep, yep. Just to be. And so mine is very similar to the one uh, to the other one. Uh, I'll just explain it very quickly because it doesn't really need to be explained. Um, I think this is a, this is not a, a fair map, and it's not a gerrymander. This is a least change uh, realistic map of what I think the state's probably going to look like. Most of the rest of the state is very very similar: six, five, four, seven, eight, all very very similar to the present iterations. Five really does become that core urban suburban seat. Um, this would have really gone for Hillary Clinton by around sixteen points. Um, so, you know, reliably uh, Democratic. The, the, where this does change is 3, 2, and 1. Um, in order to keep uh, Ann Wagner, who was a representative of the second, 
to keep her afloat. Uh, this splits St. Louis County three times. Uh, it takes in this little portion up here and then goes into the southeast like the to Russ southern Carnahan counties. Seat. Yeah. Very similar to the old Russ Carnahan seat, except it doesn't have any of the city of St. Louis in there. Um, so, uh, you know, so it's very similar to that. But the result is that is a seat that would have gone to Donald Trump in 2016 by around 19 points. Um, it wouldn't have been competitive, although in the Senate and gubernatorial races, it would fit the statewide vote very nicely. So I'd say this is probably a median vote seat for the state. This probably would have gone 57 to 40, you know, for for uh, uh, Parsons in the gubernatorial race. Uh, certainly possibly competitive if long term trends continue, but it's really not the viable seat. And then the third doesn't suffer any real partisan consequence. This is a Trump plus 31 seat. So really, um, you know, this is probably what I think they they go they go with something like this. All the seats are basically the same, ex and except for the second, which gets shored up, and the third and first, which look a little bit different because of that. Uh, so now uh, Armin will go ahead and show his map as well, uh, or his maps yeah, if sure. he has multiple maps. Um, I, I just have one. I just have one. Um, share screen. Okay, yeah. So why don't we explain what is going on here? So, yeah, I mean, basically my map looks something similar to Eric's, and I'm sure to Harrison's. Uh, I try to go for a least change map, uh, but at the same time also cleaned up a lot of the old things that were reflective of the older coalition. So, I mean, Bush has her seat here in one, um, and it's kind of difficult to get it to actually be majority black. I mean, I'm sure I can draw it differently to mess, up, mess with this number, but just the population loss is so staggering. Um, and then over here, this was a Trump plus 10 seat. It probably was pretty marginal, but Wagner would probably still be afloat because she gets, uh, I mean, is, is all of St. Charles in two currently right now? I think so. I think it's split between two and three. I'm not sure. Yeah. So um, one has this tiny little thing in St. Charles here just for the looking nice purposes. Um, but uh, yeah, so what, Wagner would lose part of Western St. Charles. Uh, and, you know, she'd have a, she'd have some close races, but, you know, she, she's proven that she can outrun the top of the ticket. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, as long as she has that seat, I'd say she's fine. Um, so then three here becomes, uh, it has Columbia, and it has Jeff city, those kind of neutralize each other out. And then you just have a bunch of these red rules here. Uh, so Blaine, Luke Meyer, whatever his name is. Uh, I mean, that's a Trump was 32, 31 seat. There's really nothing to say there. Um, Four, I basically turned into as much of a pure rural seat as I could because I gave Columbia to, uh, to three instead of four. Uh, and Hartzler, she lives in Cass County. Um, and as you can see, you know, pretty inhospitable place uh, for it to be a Democrat. Trump plus 51 in 2016 and probably something similar uh, in 2020. Uh, Ike Skelton represented a predecessor of this seat. Uh, Although uh, I'm sure he, even he would not be able to hold a seat like this. Uh, and then I think Eric and I did something very, very similar for five. Basically, as you can see, this is uh, Jackson County, all of it. And a tiny little bit of, uh, I believe that's Clay County on the other side um, with uh, North Kansas City, some precincts going into Gladstone. This here is, again, Clinton plus 16 or so. Um, so then we see uh, Gray, who lives in Ashland County, gets a big another similarly pure rural northern seat there. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, at, well, that's Atchison, Kansas. On the other side is uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, this is Buchanan County, this is Platt County. Historically, Buchanan was the blue one and Platt was the red one. But now because Platt is the wealthier one, Platt's all, Platt, Platt has moved to the left of Buchanan, which is quite interesting to see. But still, those two counties on their own are not enough to overwhelm all of this. Uh, even with uh, Truman State being in Kirksville. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Seven, uh, seven has uh, Billy Long. Uh, this is another southwest Missouri seat. Uh, now, uh, Green County, which is where Springfield is, has been moving left somewhat recently, but again, it's still not enough to overwhelm all of this. Um, and then Eight. Uh, basically, Jefferson at this point is, you know, kind of a rural exurb, and it's, start it's starting to vote more like, the southeast uh, and outside of the lead belt and the boot heel, the rest of this district isn't even really that ancestrally democratic. And so Jason Smith, uh, technically he represents the eighth, but he, he doesn't live in this one. Um, but, you know, rumor has it that he might be running for Senate or governor down the line. So 
I mean, that's not a big deal. This district will elect a Republican. So yeah, that's the that's the rundown of these districts. I believe there's uh, what one, two, three, and four counties total that are split on this map. So I think the, I think it turned out uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, yep. And if you if if you look at the partisanship, yeah, it really it's I mean all of the Republican held seats minus Wagner's are pretty safe. Mm-hmm. And I was going to mention um, one thing just I want to give the scale of what we're talking about with population loss in St. Louis. Uh, this is a city that had a peak population uh, in 1930 – or sorry, 1950 of 856,000 people. By and the end of the census, it's it's going to be under 300,000 for the first time since 19, uh, 1980 uh, – since 19, 1870. Um, it's like Pittsburgh in that category where it's where it's just declined and declined. I mean, it's at 300,576 at the last estimate. Even the county, yeah. St. Louis County, which is much more well off. It's a, by all accounts, a very safe area. Uh, it, it's declined from 1 million people in 2000 to about 994,000, which population decline in general is not good, but also stagnant growth is pretty bad. I mean, it, it's just a, yeah. it's just a very, very problematic uh I mean, it's just not a great situation uh, in the St. Louis area, and you're seeing similar trends, I think, in Illinois on the Illinois side. On the yes, on the, on the, yeah, on the East St. Louis side, especially with uh, yeah. Madison County. Yeah. Now, St. Charles County, which is the northern suburban county, is growing at a fairly decent rate. That's the one exception to this. Although I'm, that may be coming more from the areas that are not directly connected to the city. Um, regardless, a uh, great map from Armin and. If Harrison's ready, we'll go ahead and show his. Uh, just, um, <clears throat> can you give me like one minute? I'm j- almost. Oh done. yeah, and uh, actually, oh, yeah, sure. one other thing I can note about the seventh um, is that uh, those of you who know me is when I talk about Missouri, I talk I always talk about the state representative Mike Moon, who is you know this uber conservative guy who pro who's so crazy on abortion that he votes against re- restrictions because they don't go far enough. Uh, he famously <laughs> beheaded a chicken on Facebook Live to protest abortion. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and oh, uh, God, he lives- where do we find these people? Like, I sometimes question, <laughs> how do these people exist? Like, he 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 is a tr- <laughs> like he makes uh he makes like, like Paul Gosar look like a socialist. Someone, someone, well, he, like, he got a promotion. Right? He's a state senator now. Yeah, he's now <laughs> a state senator, and he ran so- for Congress the first time, and he wasn't. He was too crazy then, but now you know, in a Republican primary. If Long goes to for governor or something higher, you know, we could see we would be seeing Congressman Mike Moon. <laughs> okay, the imagine if Tom Kane Jr. and Mike Moon were both in Congress together. <laughs> I mean, but also just think about the principle of uh, of protesting abortion, which you think is murder, by killing something on Facebook. Well, no, I remember his not justifying or anything, but his excuse was. He was already doing something on the farm. And he didn't feel like cleaning up or doing anything before he made his video against abortion because it was too much effort. Here are a few other a few other fun facts about Mike Moon. Uh, he wants the internet to ban obscene websites so you cannot visit obscene websites. And he also does not like there was a statue of, of the Roman goddess Ceres in the Missouri Capitol in Johnson City. He told the governor not to replace it because it's an affront to Jesus. Um, so they don't want a, a statue of a false yeah, god on the, maps the capital of Missouri. You know, the, the Mike Moon point is the guy makes Paul Gosar look like a socialist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this was true, but this is what I was pretty sure about before. I don't. Are you sure, Eric? I'm ninety nine percent sure. I remember no, Trump winning. Daily Cost said, that, "Yeah, I could be wrong." I am like ninety five percent sure. Daily Cost said he won it, or Biden won it by ha- like. 800 votes, something very, oh, very right, small. I think we remember two different Whatever, it's a marginal seat is what it would be called. If we were in the UK, it would be called a marginal seat. Okay, so here's my first map. This is a, a Republican gerrymander. Um, I guess it's a semi-dummy mander because my second district would probably flip to the Democrats. Claire McCaskill won it. But um, regardless, it draws out Emmanuel Cleaver. So this is the first map. I went for a more traditional design for the uh, northern Missouri seats here. So in this case, I have the three. Uh, essentially runs up the Illinois border from St. Charles County up here to Iowa. And the sixth takes up pretty much the entire northwestern corner of the state of Missouri. Um, I guess we'll go through each seat numerically here. So my first district, it's close to being majority black. It's, it's definitely going to elect a black congressperson. 
So someone like Corey Bush would be fine winning this seat. Uh, if you look at the total population from 2019, even though CVAP was white, the total population was 49.2% uh, black. Now, I'm not sure about all the legality portions of this, but I don't have the time right now, so I'm just going to go forward with it. Uh, again, a very heavily Democratic seat, so Hillary Clinton would have won the seat by 55 points. Claire McCaskill would have hit 80% in the seat. It takes in all of St. Louis City, the entire thing, which is obviously not enough for a district, thanks to population. Uh, loss, and then it takes in the um, areas of St. Louis County with higher black populations. So University City runs up to the St. Louis Airport as well, uh, and takes in a few white neighborhoods out here closer to St. Charles County. Um, the second district down here. So we're looking. Hold on a second. Sorry. All right. So if we want to turn on the labels, because I don't know every county, once we get further out, it'll be useful. But uh, essentially, the second district here takes in the southern parts of St. Louis County, uh, most of the white areas, more Republican areas. Uh, Jefferson County is in the district as well, and the northern part of St. Jen is also in the district for the sake of population. But uh, to put it simply, this second district would be a competitive seat. So uh, it was a Trump plus 13 seat in 2016. Obviously, it would have been a marginal seat now. So this I'm is not really. Alexander won it? Yes. Uh, let me check. I know McCaskill carried the seat by about two points. Uh, Jason Kander, where is Senator? Um, Jason Kander won it by 0.1%. So a really close okay. race. So this is probably similar to what it was for president, something very close. So, I mean, Essentially, well, we did draw out the 5th District, this map will still dummy mender with the 2nd, but it'll be a competitive 2nd, so we could see it going back and forth. Somebody like Ann Wagner would still probably be fine in this seat because she can outrun the top of the ticket, so I would definitely not hold the Canada and McCaskill performance or even the Biden 2020 performance as a metric that essentially states that she can't win it. Oh, what is this? Oh, hold on. I'll fix that later. Actually, wait. Hold on here. I really need to use that on the side. Pre is this seriously a non-contiguous precinct? I swear to God. <laughs> oh my God. Just ignore oh. it. Just... I'll fix that if later. States, have no states with non-contiguous precincts should go to hell. I mean, there should I, be a special know, place in hell I... for the people who draw. Like, there's like, like, there's what, nine circles of hell? There should be a tenth circle of hell for people who draw non-contiguous precincts. Okay, but it's just like you hate water precincts. I hate non-contiguous precincts. <laughs> okay, I can fix Frankly, this. Frankly, with a new block editor, you can get rid of non-contiguous precincts. We can defeat non-contiguous precincts. Yeah, Frank, I, just... I've destroyed Franklin County. <laughs> Wait, can I actually We have do defeated. That? Yeah, you can go, hey, and go to the block right. editor. Go to the block editor. Because I just want to delete this tiny portion. Where is the block click editor? Click on block. Yeah, click on block. There you go. Now click on that one little tiny portion. Well, I want it in this district here. It'll zoom in. It'll zoom in. Yeah, nope. and I... Okay. Oh, God. Wait, now what? <laughs> and you have Why are these in the, the same precinct? <laughs> okay, just explain what I can do now. Uh, you got rid of it. You can get rid of that precinct. So click on it. Click no, no, no. Click on block. Click on the block, and then click on it again. To click on that tiny little portion you want to get rid of. It's gone. Oh yep. no, it's not. Yep. Zoom in. Oh, is the second locked? Oh no. Very nice. Okay, fix. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now I just have to hit this check button. Oh, done. Perfect. That is genius. I'm going to have to use that to clean up my Ohio map with Franklin County. Yeah. For those who aren't familiar hate, with Ohio, when we, when we go over I hate Ohio, Franklin County. when we go over Ohio, you will see just how atrocious the Ohio the Franklin County precincts are. There's they're like it's not even that they're non-contiguous. It's they don't make any sense. It's like abstract art, except it's horrible. <laughs> Yeah. So basically like, getting back to this, the second's a competitive seat, pretty much a toss-up. The third district, very it's pretty safe Republican. I mean, 
Someone like Kander only lost it by 15 points, but that's pretty generous. I mean, Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton would have both likely fallen at or below 30% here. Um, fourth district, the old seat of Ike Skelton. This is one of the three Republican seats that splits Emmanuel Cleaver's seat in the Kansas City area. So the fourth is a bit crazy in how it's drawn, but it, the, the only Democratic portion of the fourth is going to be over here in Jackson. And um, I mean, if you want to see... The Jackson portion does make up a, a pretty significant part of the district's population, but also a pretty significant part of the district's Democratic base. I mean, the district gains a decent amount of Democratic voters that way. Still won by Roy Blunt and by Josh Hawley, though, and uh, Trump would have won it in 2016 and now. So, again, the seat is pretty safe in the Republican column. The 5th District is the other split of Kansas City. It takes in northern Jackson County. Stretches out. The only other part that is really, I would say, democratic is Boone that it takes in. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got Boone over here, which is where Columbia is in Missouri. Now, this seat is technically more democratic than the fourth. Again, it's still a Trump plus 15 seat, so Republicans would still be winning the seat pretty reliably. Um, Josh Hawley did win it for Senate in 2018. The only Democrat who did win it was Jason Kander. But again, Democrats likely aren't going to be hitting Jason Kander's performance in. Um, districts like this even with a portion of jackson boone and the entire county of boone in the fifth but then again we have the sixth takes in a little bit of jackson takes in um clay and plot county historically as armin mentioned buchanan county was always more democratic than plot county buchanan county actually went to barack obama in 2008 now the tables are turned and buchanan gets redder um but joe biden actually did fairly well got about 47 percent of the vote in plot which is more affluent and more well-educated so long-term things look better for democrats there this is still again a pretty safe republican seat if you focus on the presidential metric both roy blunt and josh hawley won it the seventh district is down here the billy long seat which is the mike moon seat you mean mike yes <laughs> in the future where you've got springfield you know um and this seat it's, very it's springfield is the only remotely competitive area in that district by the way like it's it's yeah. It's not yeah, competitive, every, but it's like 60 40. It's, it's not Springfield makes the margin go from like 85% Republican to like 70% Republican. And the eighth is the boot heel region, you know, these iron, the iron belt counties, iron. But um, the, the eighth iron and county is one of them. Yeah. Yes. Historically, the eighth district was always the more ancestrally Democratic part of Missouri. But mm -hmm. now we've just seen the eighth district become the Republican rock for the state. Because of the lead belt. I mean, that, that yep. that's the traditional, well, that's the lead production area of that, where lead was yeah, basically produced in Missouri. And it's kind yeah. of dying off. And to quickly go, this is my this is my least change, you know, somewhat fair map. At best, Democrats can get three seats if they beat Ann Wagner because this second district is more competitive than the one on my other map. But again, mm -hmm. so again basically, you, you have the same thing here. The first district is actually, I think, slightly more black than it was on the other map, but about the same. My second district here, uh, it is more Democratic, so this would be a tougher seat for Ann Wagner to hold. Um, you know, if you look at the Senate 2018 margin, McCaskill won it by a greater margin, and it was pretty much only Trump plus 10 in 2016, so my second would have almost certainly been a Biden seat. So this is basically a fair map. It's pretty clean, nice and orderly. The Democrats will have one competitive seat to defend and then two safe seats because Emmanuel Cleaver is also safe out from this 5th district seat. And just for the sake of time, the other three seats here are solidly Republican and won't be flipping. So essentially, mm -hmm. that is what you've got there. One second here. Wrong thing. Oh, sorry. How do I do this? Oh, yes. There we go. Turn off counties. You might have to reload the page. Oh, there they are. Yep. Yep, and then I wanted to do that for this map as well, and then I'll unshare, and we can get back to what we were doing. Yeah. So, And for those who are unfamiliar with the DRA colors, dark red is Republican plus 20 uh, or more, and the, the light red is – or the, the medium red is Republican plus 10 or more. Uh, one final note to leave off on, on St. Louis, just because it's a very interesting city, is we mentioned the uh, the population decline. It really does not seem to be uh, reducing. Uh just the, well, I mentioned the murder rate being pretty high in St. Louis. It's actually like literally comparable to like, uh, I mean, 64 homicides well, out of 100,000 a year. That's comparable to Cape Louis, Town, South Africa. That's not great. 
East St. Louis on the Illinois side is the most dangerous city in America. Mm-hmm. But in terms of murder rate, like St. Louis is is just really is not great. It's it's really bad. Um, but yeah, the next day we're going to go on to is Montana. I don't think we're going to have to spend too much time on Montana because it, there's really not a whole lot to do. Our, our redistricting radar tool does give a good idea of most of the options here. Uh, Montana is an interesting state for a lot of reasons. One of them is that it actually used to have uh, – it currently only has one congressional district. Uh, it used to have two from 1913 to, uh, to I believe, 93. It had two congressional districts. Um, yeah, with since then it's had one. Yep. It has uh, over a million people, so it's by far the most populated state with only one congressional district. And it's on the edge of gaining one, uh, 2013 – or the 2020 census. It would be kind of a crushing blow – for them not to get one. I think it's presumed that, that New York is going to lose two, that California is going to lose one, maybe two. Uh, a lot of these states are going to be losing congressional districts. So the, the question is whether or not Montana's fairly stagnant growth has been enough for it to kind of sneak back over that edge. Um, the current representative in Montana's first district, I would show you a map of it, but it's literally just the state of Montana. Um, the current <laughs> the current representative there is Greg Gianforte, uh, who is most known for assaulting a reporter uh, before Wait, no, 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 no. It's or, no, 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 no. Sorry, Matt Rosen. Matt Rosen. No, former representative was. It's, it's was okay. He's now Forte. governor. He's now the governor. Yeah, he's he's now the governor. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Greg the Gianforte same. won the 2017 special election to replace Ryan Zinke, who was the the at large representative. Uh, he became notorious for assaulting a reporter uh, right before the election. Uh, he yeah, won I was going to say he won the 2017 WWE Montana Championship. Yeah. He won it by about eight points, which was uh, not great for Montana, but he also, I mean, he assaulted a reporter. So, I mean, what what else? I mean, his opponent was a Bernie Sanders supporting socialist. I think if if they had someone who was not a, a progressive candidate, they might have done better. Because uh, Montana uh, certainly To, to be fair better. as well, uh, Montana is a heavy vote by mail state. And so by the time that, you know, he body slammed the reporter, a lot of people had already cast their ballots as well. Yeah. So it didn't have as much of an impact on the race. I mean, he was still elected to go. He was still elected to the governorship. Well, right. Because yeah. what's a, what's one body slam three years ago? Yeah. Well, so but again, it's, Montana it's, it's still yeah. shocks me that Matt Rosendale is a U.S. representative because I just, I, all I remember Matt Rosendale for is losing to John Tester in the 2018 <laughs> Senate race. Yeah. But again, uh, I'll do a little bit more about Montana since, again, it is literally one district. We can talk about the entire state. Uh, it's a very Republican state at this point. It used to be competitive. It was the home of the prairie populists, if you're familiar with that term. Um, it's actually the only state in the country that does not have at-will employment. Uh, you actually have – the entire state requires just cause to fire employees or require some sort of cause. Uh, they voted down a right-to-work bill even though it was a very, very strong Republican majority in the legislature and a Republican governor for the first time uh, since, I believe, 2004. Um, it voted for uh, Donald Trump by 16 points over Joe Biden. That's a little bit down from the 31-point margin of 2016, but really that's mostly due to Democratic vote total – or sorry, 31. That's a little bit down because uh, Biden gained five percentage points. Democrats kind of tend to get stuck around 40 points in Montana in recent years. Aside from 2008, where Barack Obama almost won the state, which is really a fluke in hindsight. Um, the senators right now, uh, uh, one of them is John Tester, who was snuck by three very close Senate races um, and is probably going to. Although surprisingly, his 2018 bid was technically his biggest margin of victory. Yeah, it was the first, yeah, time, it was the first time he won with over 50%. Of the vote. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he is a cautious progressive. I would. Prefer I would not call him a moderate. He's a very very cautious progressive. Uh, he he's against gun control of really any kind. He's voted against pretty much all gun control. Other than that, he pretty much votes the party line, but he's very cautious about it. He's not in the news. Um, he he kind of stays in the background. Um, the other senator is uh, Steve Daines, who won the 2014 election, uh, which is one of the more disastrous Democratic recruiting failures in recent American history. Um, First, they had uh, the appointee was uh, John Walsh to replace uh, the incumbent senator there, and it turned out he plagiarized his army, uh, his army college uh, papers, and so he dropped out. The nominee came Amanda Curtis, who was literally a wobbly, a member of the Industrial Workers of the World, and so they lost the race. They thought they could win it back with Steve Bullock in in twenty twenty, but he still lost by ten points. Um, so not a great situation there for Montana, but. Uh, Montana is really easy to talk about with redistricting because it has a commission. It has an independent commission. 
Um, they'll draw the map. The Supreme Court appointed them. Um, the Supreme Court's Democratic, technically. Uh, the assumption is that Montana will have one Republican seat and one more competitive seat. The question is how competitive it would be. So I'll go ahead and show our redistricting radar maps, which will be pretty similar to the ones we're going to show. We can go over them really quickly, but they're going to be pretty similar to this. Um, I, I looked at the population variations. There's not a whole lot of change here. Um, so start with the, set, the first district, which would be new. Uh, this is the more Democratic portion of the state. It's still Republican. It voted for Trump by eight points over Joe Biden. Probably went a little bit better for Bullock than uh, than you know than Biden in this area, but even still, probably would have went for Danes. Um, and then the second is very Republican. Uh, Trump or Trump plus twenty five in the twenty sixteen or twenty twenty vote totals. And I'll go ahead and show you our impressive gerrymanders of Montana. This is the Democratic gerrymander. Uh, you could actually draw a Democratic seat in Montana, and this probably holds. Uh, this one would have voted for uh, for Joe Bi or for Hillary Clinton by around two points, with around nine percent going to third parties. As you can see, this is a this is a curse upon God and man. This is a horrendous map. But wouldn't that be um, kind of it's also enveloped in the other districts? So wouldn't that be a hilarious? Wouldn't that be a hilarious dummy mander if that seat somehow voted for a Republican? <laughs> yeah, after all again, that it's, it's native. Yeah. But again, it's Native American, 12 points, 12% 12 Native American. There is a high proportion of Native Americans in Montana, not as many as in some other states, but still a, a large number. Uh, if you're paying attention, uh, John Tester voted basically torpedoed Lumbee recognition because a couple of tribes in Montana told him to, um, and the Lumbee were not happy about that. Um, and I'm not happy about that for that matter, but that's another story. And then the second one would have voted for Trump by about 52 points. So that's pretty, pretty Republican. And then the Republican gerrymandered. It's honestly not that hard to do. Um, it doesn't even look that bad. I mean, it's not great, but like these both would have voted for Trump by 20 points, 19 points. Like, yeah, if you trade out Gallatin for uh, Flathead in the north. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and show my map I created that's revised. And again, it's going to look exactly the same because all I did is move one county. Um, I think I traded out um, – which county is this? Yeah, I traded out uh, Meager County for Sweetgrass County for population balance. But yeah, it's literally the exact same thing. I mean, one's Trump plus 13 in 2016, one's Trump plus 28. Not a whole lot to say. It's Montana. Yeah. And I, anyone else have maps for Montana? Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I have one too. All right, Harrison, you want to go first? Uh. Why don't you go first? I'll okay. find you in a second. Um, yeah. So, um, as you can see, uh, Rosendale, not Stapleton, is the uh, is the uh, is the one who's in the current district. Uh, I mean, it's a state where you really don't need any county splits. I mean, this was Trump plus ten. The other one was Trump plus thirty three. They're probably something similar. Maybe the first one's a bit more competitive, but it would probably be a lean R seat, give or take. Bullock probably could have won it. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing nothing, nothing too crazy to say about it otherwise. Uh, I mean, yeah, Tester won this by 13, and he lost this one by 8. So Tester, Tester really had some strong uh, rural strength there. Um, but, yeah, that, uh, that basically sums up Montana. And again, the, I want to mention real quick, the reason our fair map looks the way it does, you could draw one that's a little bit more democratic like Armin did. We did it just to follow the mountain boundaries. That basically every single map you're going to see, the traditional the traditional lines of the second and the first were following that mountain path that we did. So it's all going to look the yeah. same. The question is just which counties on the other end it picks up. Because Montana is a mix of Great Plains and uh, and Rocky Mountains. There's a, there's a good mix of both in the state. And, uh, yeah, Harrison, why don't I have... just go ahead and share my map for you guys? Yeah. One second. Again, it's Montana. If you were expecting more from Montana, I'm sorry. Um, it has two districts, or it might not even have a second district. We really don't know. This is all speculative. It could have one district, in which case this entire segment has been a gigantic waste of time. <laughs> so this is my map. I mean, like Armin, in a state this small, you can get by perfectly without splitting counties. Like everybody else, I did the east-west divide with a western seat that's slightly more competitive than the east. Eastern seat here is safely Republican. It just is. I mean, I think Tester, let me load up 2018 Senate data. But yeah, these data over here show um, 
the tester ran pretty well, given how Republican this district is. I mean, Clinton got only 30% here. Tester got 45. So very good. But then the second district, if you want to look at this from a background map standpoint here, the second district is pretty much where you have Missoula. Um, and uh, you also have Lewis and Clark County. and Gallup. Oh, yeah, bro. Your map is literally identical to mine. <laughs> is it actually? <laughs> yeah, the same counties and everything. Well, I guess great minds think alike there. But this, again, 2016, I mean... <laughs> This is a test Again, seat it's Montana. There's, all, there's, <laughs> there's like two ways to draw a freaking district <laughs> yeah. in Montana. I mean, you can, draw the, you, I can guess... draw the map, which will you can draw the map, which will give Stephen Wolf a hemorrhage, which is the north south map. Um, <laughs> oh well, that's no, that's bad. Yeah, well, you don't want to do that. There, are, there are two reasonable ways to do it. You either add flathead or the stuff in the south. We would. I mean, I could calculate how Joe Biden did since there are no county splits, but probably just a bit better than Clinton here if you look at 2016. So this would be a competitive seat. A Democrat like Kathleen Williams probably could win this seat because you wouldn't have this here essentially denigrating her statewide. But yes, it's Montana. I say Nebraska is more interesting. Let's move on. Yeah, the only problem with Montana for Democrats is the native areas are actually in the Republican portions of the state. Uh, if you wanted, that's why the map, the Democratic one, draws in those areas. It scoops up into the into the native areas, but they're just not connected to the rest of it. So unfortunately for the native community, who does vote Democratic, even if there is a seat that's competitive, they're going to be in the one represented by, you know, represented by Matt Ro or Matt Rosendale, if I believe right. Well, I'm um, sure Matt so. Rosendale. I'm sure he's very popular. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to go to Nebraska, which is actually a really, really fascinating state for a variety of reasons. Uh, it's one of only two states that splits its con that splits its presidential vote by congressional districts. So redistricting here doesn't only have an impact on representatives; it has an impact on the presidential vote. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, Nebraska here. It's an interesting state for a variety of reasons. One of which it is ha it only has one chamber; it has a the upper chamber is its only chamber, the the unicameral. Uh, technically, its 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 legislature's members are known as senators, but it's not the Senate. Um, it doesn't have a lower house; they abolished it. And also, all of the representatives are nonpartisan. Although we do know the party affiliations of them, their party affiliations are known during the elections, and you don't see um, Democrats winning in like deep Republican areas or vice versa. It really does still work about the same as the rest of it. As a state, Nebraska is very very Republican. It's actually a little bit more Republican than Kansas right now, if I think so. But it's, it does have a growing Democratic strength in Omaha, which is the largest and city. Lincoln, in the, too. Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln, yeah. Nebraska is an underrated one. Lincoln is definitely um, one to look out on in terms of places that are, are shifting a little bit. But it's just – it's so Republican, the rest of the state, that it honestly does not matter what happens in Omaha and Lincoln because the rest of the state is like Trump – plus. It's, it's the single most Republican district, the Republican electoral area in the country. Uh, I believe Trump won it by around 50 points at least. I think he got at least 70%, um, and which is crazy given the district almost elected a Democrat in 2006, the third district. Oh, uh, yeah. I but, made a map of that. <laughs> yep. But um, the the legislature, or in this case the unicameral, which is one chamber, draws the map, and then it goes to the governor, and the governor can veto it. Um, the state legislature has rough guidelines as to what to draw. They could get rid of them in theory. There's speculation the legislature could draw a Republican gerrymander, but I really think that's unlikely. Uh, Nebraska is honestly one of the best states for a possible Democratic pickup, for a reason we'll explain in a, shortly. Um, but it does have a very, very strong Republican uh, in, in in one of the more Democratic districts represented by a Republican in the country, which is the, the second. So let's go over the three representatives of Nebraska, or actually let's show the map first. Uh, this is a very odd map. I'm not a huge fan of the arrangement of it. Um, it basically looks like a, like a Russian egg, like it's the second and then it expands into this and then into this. Um, it basically, the third goes from these areas right here, which are from country and you will find more probably, you'll probably find more QAnon supporters in this area than you'll find Democrats. Uh, it's really, really, really Republican. Then you get to the center of the state in these areas. Dakota is actually a, a competitive county. Um, and then down to, down to the border. The first is really interesting because it has Lincoln, and it also has some other competitive areas around Omaha. There was thought it could be competitive, um, but uh, the representative incumbent, Jeff Fortenberry, managed to hold off the Democrat by a pretty sizable margin. Um, it's worth noting well, he, that Jeff People Fortenberry only thought it was competitive because he had started 
advertising and spending quite a lot in the second half of the campaign. Yeah. He uh, he did not take the race for granted. I think he probably wasted money. I think he's also a little bit paranoid about his image. Uh, if you recall, he's probably most well known because someone uh, he had a billboard out in public. Someone put googly eyes over the billboard and changed his name from Jeff Fortenberry to Jeff Fartenberry, and he got very very angry about this. <laughs> um, I mean, he was not, he was not very pleased. Screaming like Mike Boss. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find the Jeff Fartenberry image because it's honestly it's honestly hilarious. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah that is pretty funny <laughs> i mean he, he was not happy about this <laughs> <laughs> at least he didn't run someone over like the south dakota ag oh I don't, yeah we, but again he was not happy having, about this or janklo too i don't know what's in the water with well south i think dakota. janklo <laughs> just murdered someone not even yeah. ran them over. But again, Jeff Fortenberry represents the first. Uh, do not call him Fortenberry. He he he's also a portion of Omaha area. Uh, Don Bacon is in the second, which it says R plus one here. This is because Cook PBI is a terrible metric that you should not use. I was actually looking how it voted. Uh, it voted, if I can find the vote total here, which should be pretty accurate. Yeah, Joe Biden won it by six points. It's not a deep. It's not an R plus one seat. It's it's just not. Um, now, Don Bacon was able to win because, one, he's a really strong incumbent, and two, his opponent was Cara Eastman, who is uh, a progressive advocate of the Green New Deal, Medicare for All. Uh, he's, she's been abandoned by the party both times she's run. Uh, in fact, actually, the, the, the person Don Bacon beat, um, Br- uh, Brad Ashlow, uh, uh, Brad Asher. Asher, sorry. The former yeah, congressman. He, uh, he endorsed, no. Yeah, he endorsed Don Bacon. And it's funny because – Brad Ashford was one of two Democrats in 2014, the other being Gwen Graham in Florida, who won mm-hmm. uh, a seat in the 2014 uh, otherwise Republican red wave midterm. But then he lost it after just one term to Bacon in 2016. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, Bacon's really strong. Yeah, this is Omaha is a moderate area. It's not a liberal or conservative area, but it's also not going to support a Green New Deal Supporting socialist. I mean, she ran well. Well, it wouldn't support Joe somebody like Mike Moon either. Yeah, it would not. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> if Mike because because if Don Bacon retires, runs for statewide office someday, some nut job will win the primary and lose the seat. Someone like Mike Moon, yeah, but... he'll cut a chicken's head off in front of the <laughs> Omaha Center or whatever, in, in front of like the Omaha Vegan Club or something. Yeah, he'll go to some <laughs> suburb with his pickup truck and like start. Cutting, throwing dead chickens onto people's yards. <laughs> but, but before we get off track a little bit, I do want to show this third because as recently as 2006, this is when Adrian Smith won his won his election here. Um, God, that's he only like won Dan it by 10 Benishak points. level bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, Dan Ben. I don't know what's up with him. Yeah, but yeah. this is a district that, that Donald oh, Trump God. won 75 percent of the vote in, and Republicans I mean, even, still even almost Bush won 75 percent of the vote at the time. Yeah. Yeah, we're not really sure how that happened. It's yeah, the same thing that's as like Ilhan, Ilhan Omar level underperformance. That's just bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not great. But again, I mean, that, uh, would, he be, has a that would be that would be like now. almost that would be that would basically be like almost losing LaSalle Parish on the county level as a Republican. Yeah, as a white. I mean, Republican. Adrian Smith. I mean, look, Mike Moon could maybe move to the third after you know Adrian Smith retires, and <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a district. That's a district that Mike that would that would elect Mike, Mike Moon. Moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe and Mike Moon notice, should carpet yeah. bag like Dan Rodimer and run into like <laughs> oh, he should carpet. If someone in New Jersey vacates a seat, Mike Moon should move here and run. He should run He's in the seventh for Smith. Oh God! <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Mike I Moon and Hurst thing. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Moon managed to lose Chris Smith's district somehow to a Democrat. No, just have but Mike I, I Moon and Hirsch Singh again. run for governor. No, Hirsch Singh. I to sh- Hirsch Singh is <laughs> Seth Grossman is not happy because Hirsch Singh was supposed to endorse him, but then Hirsch Singh didn't endorse him, and Seth Grossman is now running against the uh, Republican candidate that has the line in New Jersey. In a Senate primary, so the the cur- so let me give you a bit of context real quick. The current Senate seat we're looking at is the uh, second district. So it's all of Atlantic County. It's held by a Republican senator named Chris Brown, but it's a Biden plus eleven seat. Now there's this guy named Palestina who was endorsed by the Republicans. He has the line. He's a moderate, sensible guy. 
running against a very credible state assemblyman as a Democrat. Here comes Seth Grossman with his white nationalist Facebook post, former second district congressional nominee against <laughs> Jeff Van Drew. And if he wins, the seat's basically goodbye. Um, <laughs> Seth Grossman is look, the South but, Jersey. Look, if he does win. win, but I don't, I don't think you, you, you understand the owning the libs factor. If he does win, the libs will be owned. What more do you well, want? Even if you lose, well, the, no, that's the, bad because if Seth Grossman wins that Senate seat somehow, he'll say, "I'm ready to run for Congress against Jeff Van Drew and primary him." <laughs> and we'll have Mike Moon in South Jersey, like arguing with, <laughs> serving with Senator Hirsch, saying, arguing that like space lasers are going to blow up New Jersey or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see, but the, the key difference between Mike Moon and Seth Grossman is that Mike Moon actually wins elections. <laughs> okay, that is true. <laughs> Yeah, but let's get back on track here a little bit. I want to go through a little bit of just these history here. Um, I mean, for some reason, for some stupid reason, Nebraska's second district is is here, and its first is here. I don't know why they did that. It's dumb. I think it's because like, back in the day, literally, it's math. It should be one, back in the day. Nebraska, two, I think, just three. had two districts. I think it just had two. Yeah, and they just made and one then they just the added the third one in the west, probably <laughs> from like the eighteen hundreds or something. Yeah. Yeah, but it's stupid. One, two, three. They should just switch these no, next time. What they, what they probably did is they just parted the western and eastern districts and put the new one in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how you get two, three. They just renumbered one. Yeah, but again, you'll notice between 1992 and 2002, Omaha grew a lot. Uh, and so the district shrunk by about half. And then between 2002, 1993, 2002, it shrunk again because Omaha is growing. And then since 2013, it got shifted a little bit because um, after Obama won the seat in 2008, Republicans were not happy. And so they drew the seat differently to try and make sure it would not vote for Democrat again. They obviously failed, but it worked for two for two cycles. Um, It also resulted in a Republican for most of the cycles. Um, So that's kind of the lineup. Well, they've still got the election. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll show the elections, uh, the elections daily version. Of our, didn't, you know, of our didn't map here. Don Bacon run an advertisement saying everybody loves bacon or something? Well, he's yes. popular. I mean, he 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 literally is very very popular. Um, okay, pull redistricting radar here. Um, there's really only a few ways that Nebraska can be drawn. One of them is a fair map, and one of them is a Republican gerrymander. Um, we have both, actually. Yeah, here we go. Let's look at this right here. Scroll down, and again, this is going to be a little bit off. I have a one that's accurate population that will just look a little bit different, but uh, they fare Nebraska, too. Goes for Biden by about 10 points. I don't even think Don Bacon could win that seat. Um, no, he did So, yikes. On the other hand, if, if Republicans wanted to, they could draw this, which just gives Omaha to Adrian Smith. Um, and it's still the most Republican seat in the state. It votes for... By 29 points. So if Adrian Smith wants Omaha, I guess he can have it. Um, or most of Omaha. Some I can't wait to show you guys my my dummy mander. <laughs> I well, already you know here. by 2030 it will become a dummy mander. But. Ooh. So I do. I only drew a fair map because I don't think the legislature is going to draw a gerrymander here. Um, and it, it's again, it's a, it's a population thing. It's going to be pretty... Very similar to the current one, except the third takes in these two counties right here. I think right now it only takes in up to up to a Doug, Dakota County. Now it takes yeah. in Thurston, but it also gets rid of these two right here. Again, population shifts, very minor stuff. It's unimportant. Uh, broader point is oh, that Donald is Trump would have... Yeah. Oh, uh, 20, okay. The third would have voted for Trump by tw- 55 points. Um. I mean, it, it's just, it's very Republican. The second is, again, it's stupid. It's Omaha instead of the other way around. But uh, it would have voted for Donald Trump very narrowly. And then it would have voted for Democrats for Senate and governor by good margins. And it would have voted for Joe Biden by 10 points or so. Um, and then finally, the th- the first. Um, it actually could be fairly close if you look at the totals here. Um, governor, R plus 11. Senator, R plus 12. Um it's a similar situation to Kansas. I mean, the Republican, a fair map is going to kind of make a second district, the median district a little bit to the left of the state. But if, if a Republican is losing a Republican plus 15 seat, like, I think that's on them. I don't, I don't think it's really on them. On yeah. You're just like anyone else other than them. at that point. Yeah. I mean, they right, need a Mike Moon in that district and Jeff Fortenberry 
Seems to be okay. Just do not put googly eyes on his name. Yeah, uh, he's fine unless you do that. Okay, here's the first map I drew. This Good is a God. nice, nice democratic map. Here you've got it. It's Good fair. Lord. <laughs> Very fair. <laughs> <laughs> it is fair. You've got two safe Republican seats, to put it bluntly, for Fortenberry and Adrian. Actually, yes, for Fortenberry and Adrian Smith, two very safe seats. Democrats can't even crack 20% in this third district, which is basically as red as California after the space laser. Uh, the, second <laughs> district, the second district over here. Um, I combine Lincoln and Omaha and a bit of the suburban portions of Omaha, but mostly just Metro Omaha and Lincoln with a few poor Republicans that are suckered into being represented by a Democrat like Car Eastman. Yeah, um, since Lincoln's in there, probably Kate Bowles would be the run to run would be the one to run for that seat. So she is from Lincoln. Yes, um, but it is a this is a safe seat. So it's it's nice and uh, here. My other fair map here is over here. Um <laughs> this is the, it's again part of the Get Adrian Smith Omaha Club. <laughs> Yeah, watch a Democrat win that, and then Box Butte <laughs> County is going to scream when they're represented by yeah, that's a liberal a thick Democrat. Third congressional district right there. To be fair, guys, this first district will probably become a dummy mander at some point because it, it oh, only, it's only, it only it's eleven. Wow, it would only take it's a, it's 10, a dummy 000, mander right now. <laughs> it would only take ten thousand more Democratic votes to flip it to the Democrats, and then just imagine. Like counties like this being represented by a Democrat in Congress. I mean, just no one sure lives one of those there. counties. I'm pretty sure Ben Sass lost one of those counties in a Senate Senate primary. Oh yeah, these but they also have QAnon. five people in them. This is QAnon country out here. You're, this they they do not want to be represented by an Omaha liberal or some tech. Law yeah, there there'd be an insurrection county. at their constituents' office. No, <laughs> you, these people these people do not want to be represented by some big city Democrat from Thurston County. Thurston County is the native reservation, right? That was my joke. <laughs> no, it's whatever. Never mind. All right. I'll go with mine. I, I mean, I just made one fair map of Nebraska. Um, okay. So is it is it fair or fake fair? It's actually fair. Um yeah, here's the map. I mean, it I mean, every Nebraska map looks like some variation of this, right? Uh this one. Uh, Hillary very narrowly lost it, but uh, Raybould and Christ both won it fairly decently. Um, so yeah, uh, Don Bacon could hold it down. Quick but question: any other... What are those little flag things on there? I, how do you get those? Oh, you add landmarks that they're good yep. for like marking down where incumbents live. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a real, it's a, it's a new DRA update. For those who don't know, you can draw um, basically co communities of interest maps and mark landmarks locations. Uh, I never thought of using it for the flag, using the flag for incumbent location. So that is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, then you have the first here, which basically is just eastern Nebraska. You have Dakota, Thurston. Thurston is your native reservation. You have L uh, Lancaster County, which is Lincoln. And then you have Saline County, which is ancestral Dems. But now it's pretty Trumpy, as you can as you can see there. Um, so in theory, if Jeff Fortenberry was, you know, caught in bed with a dead girl or a live boy, a Democrat could come close in this seat, uh, Trump plus 17, um, and probably moved somewhat left, um, uh, just cause of the, the shifts going on in Lincoln, but it, Fortenberry would still be, be safe. I mean, this 2012 PVI is so, uh, R plus nine. And we, where does Fortenberry live? In, in Lincoln. Yeah, he lives in Lincoln. And, and for perspective on Lincoln, I don't think people realize it's, it's actually a pretty liberal place at this point. Um, I think it's actually yeah. They've the universities there too. I think yeah. Um, it, actually, in the in the Wait, referendum to appeal the death but, penalty, but the uh, oh, sorry. best way to find where incumbents and any candidates live is our campaigns. Go to the our campaigns yeah. website, completely free. That's the most accurate way to find where they live. Yeah, and then yeah. the third uh, out here is just Adrian Smith's QAnon district or whatever. It's just yeah, my stuff. Yeah, this is nearly a Trump plus 60 seat. Yeah, no offense, my, but when I drove through Nebraska through there, it was literally just all flat farmland for the well, whole yeah, my, my, Mike Moon would find plenty of chickens to have his way with yeah. out in the well, third district in Nebraska. They call it the Great Plains, Plains for a reason. Mike Moon, I know, but you'll win the third district unless you get caught like doing things with a chicken, in which case you're going to be voted mm -hmm. out of office immediately. No, in which case you'd win by five points instead of like seventy. That is correct. <laughs> but yeah, that's governor. Uh, 
that there is a senator. And so yeah, as you can see, there isn't too much uh, there to to uh, to look at, but yeah. Mm -hmm. There. And one more thing I want to mention since I was mentioning about um about that portion um what's it called about uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Sorry. Um, is I wanted to show this map real quick that I had made of Nebraska. Um, this is of the death penalty referendum. They had a, they had a, the legislature briefly repealed the death penalty, and then voters told them to uh, go screw themselves and, re and unrepealed the death penalty. Um, confusingly, the referendum repeal meant keep repealing the legislation to repeal the death penalty. So you're repealing death penalty abolition. Uh, Lancaster was the only county in Nebraska that actually voted to keep the death penalty repeal. Even Omaha voted to keep the death penalty. Um, so that's just an idea. That's just an indication of how liberal. How many people do you uh, think misvoted in that election? Not Read many. It was pretty well known. Yeah, it was really well known what it meant. Um, everyone knew what it meant. I mean, it was, it, it was in the news so often you probably couldn't miss it. But um, yeah, um, I think with that, we have all of our stuff in for this episode. So um, uh you know, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like what we do, uh, we do have a Patreon now. You can go and subscribe to it. You'll get access to ad-free podcasts after we make them. After that, I give you other perks. Uh, that would that kind of helps us, you know, do uh, keep stuff like this going. Uh, we have some other tools as well on our website that you can go look at and electionsdaily.com. Um, we really appreciate your support. Uh, we'll be back next week with additional states. We've got some pretty interesting ones coming up in the you know, coming up pretty soon after Nebraska, I think, you know, we're getting into some of these states in the near future, like New York, uh, North Carolina, which will be a really fun one for me to do, my home state. Uh, I'm pretty sure up next, we've got Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico. Some actually pretty interesting states to go over. Um, so, yeah, um, you can find us on Twitter. Our handles are here. Uh, Armin, where, is, uh, where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, my handle is at Thomas underscore Armin. Uh, spell like that, so... Yeah. Yep. And you can see our handles on the screen. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching so much. And we'll see you next week on next week's edition of Redistricting Radar.